<laughs> okay, okay, okay. Right here. You guys won't like me for this one. But I, okay, hold up before you judge me. So have you heard about what Dave Ramsey, the financial expert on Fox Business, has his own nationally syndicated radio show. The author of Financial Peace University has a very big program with Inside the Churches. Do you hear what he said about the stimulus checks? My team brought this up to my attention this afternoon. He says, Matt, you gotta watch this video. The internet's blown, Twitter's blown up on what his reaction to stimulus checks are and what he said on Fox Business. So let's check this out together. So let's take a look at what Dave Ramsey here had to say on Fox Business. Well, to start with, we need to understand, we got $1.7 trillion in lot student of, loan debt. $192 oh, billion debt, a lot of, of money. Not so much. Let's do some ratios, folks. If we're going to do math, we probably ought to play math. Now, on top of that, when you dig into it, the whole idea that, that student loans being forgiven is going to stimulate the economy, that assumes that people were getting ready to pay them off this year. and in oh, Okay, okay, so he's talking about student loan debt. Okay, so listen, uh, I went to the military. I have zero student loan debt. Uh, I made my millions by not going to college. I made my millions in the insurance industry and being an entrepreneur. My children asked me, Poppy, do we go to college? I said, babe, if you want to go to college, no problem. Uh, knock yourself out, but don't think it's the only path for you to make your money. Your dad didn't make his money through going through college and having a college degree. But I'm seeing the, the faces that they see right now, Elizabeth Warren. I see AOC, huge advocates of eliminating student loan debt. So uh, interesting what he has to say here as we continue and instead would use that same $40,000 that they were getting ready to pay off their student loan and stimulate the economy with it. Again, that's economic hogwash. It's smoke and mirrors. It's By the way, I, I, I'm a big believer in why don't, why don't colleges, why don't colleges lower student uh, tuition? Why don't, why don't colleges take some of the money they do receive from boosters and these equity funds? And everything on the campus is tax-free because they're a non-profit, right? So they make money on, on, on food, tax-free. They make money on their investments, tax-free. They make money on sports, tax-free. Make money on jersey sales, tax-free. There's zero taxes to any profit that they make. So why do they keep raising the cost of going to school? And there's a report that I think $340, $350 billion of revenue is lost by colleges. Well, I'm glad they're financially prepared for it. I'm glad they rethought about how they spend the money as they have these facilities that have been busting out and, and hoarding money. Why don't they lower the cost of going to college and the barrier to entry to get secondary education? How's, how's that for a thought going forward instead of just trying to eliminate it? I think colleges need to really rebase the cost of education. Simply not going to happen. Dave, I just think there's a, there's a moral hazard doing this. You're oh, young. absolutely. You, you signed a financial contract. You have an obligation to pay that money. I have to agree there. There is a moral obligation. If you sign a dotted line saying, now you may not like me for saying this because every time we hold people accountable to their word, they don't like it. That's annoying. But when you say I have a promise to pay, what do you think you should do with it? When you say I, 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 have, I, I listen, how you do one thing is how you do everything. I remember myself filing bankruptcy in 1996 because I had an obligation to pay and I couldn't pay. I'm making 850 bucks every two weeks. A fellow Marine says, why don't you go file bankruptcy? I didn't know what bankruptcy is all, all about. I filed bankruptcy, but without realizing for the next seven to 10 years, my credit was ruined that I had to get myself back on a financial level again. And I, I tell you this though, that negative experience for me, at least for me, my experience, I know it's been different for you in your situations, but for me, that negative experience never got me close to filing bankruptcy ever, ever again. It caused me to be a little bit more thoughtful with my money. It caused me to set up some budgeting guidelines because if you don't discipline your situation, the situation will find a way to attack you and discipline you when you don't like it. So let's take a look here. Back. Absolutely. And well, listen, there's some situations where folks are hurting and this thing has become, it's gotten completely out of hand. Yeah. I mean, there are people's lives who have been destroyed by this program. Somebody needs some relief somewhere. I'm fine with that. But this has nothing to do with really helping people. This yeah, I just, I just got a message from somebody on Instagram. They're 45, 46 years old. They're still paying student loan debt. I mean, <laughs> I mean I, I, we, we find them all the time. Uh, people with massive amounts of student loan debt, you know, and they've been paying it, and the message is this. I've been paying it for years. It still hasn't gone down in principle because just to pay off the interest. So, I mean, to, to, to put somebody in a, in a mass amount of student loan debt is a huge, it's a huge mistake for the country to go into. 
and and they're getting a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar year job, hundred thousand dollar year job, which is and after tax is not even enough to offset the payment of the student loan debt, and they still have to live, and they want to have a kid, they want to buy homes. It cripples them from getting ahead financially in their 20s and 30s, and hopefully in their 40s, as this lady was sending me a message on Instagram saying, I'm still paying student loan debt. I still got, I guess, still $40,000 left to go. Wow. This is a political gimme by progressives simply trying to buy votes. And we know that because when you go from 10,000 in forgiveness to 50,000 in forgiveness, the people who benefit are not lower income people. The vast majority of people that have an average income or less have less than $10,000 in student loan debt. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of people who would be blessed by moving it from 10 to 50 are high income earners. So again, this is all political. I, I have to disagree there. I mean, I've run across a lot of people with uh, that are teachers here in the Chicago public school system. I run across a lot of people here with 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar year jobs that have 50, 80 thousand dollars in student loan debt. So I got to disagree with what Dave Ramsey has to say there. Uh, the people that are 100 thousand, 200 thousand, 300 thousand because they have a master's or a PhD, sure they're higher income earning profession, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're making more money. They may have higher education, they may have higher cost of student loan debt, but that does not mean they're necessarily higher income earning professionals or entrepreneurs. Rhetoric, you know, it's not Dave, reality. You, you come from an interesting perspective. You talk to Americans across the country every day on your radio program. Yeah. What, what, what do you believe is the right number or the right answer for, a, for the next stimulus check? Well, this is, I don't believe in a stimulus check because if $600 or $1,400 changes your life, you were pretty much screwed already. You got other issues going on. Uh, you, have a, you have a career. Okay, okay, okay. Right here, you guys won't like me for this one, but I, okay, hold up before you judge me. I agree with what he just said right there. Okay, stop right there. I will say this though. I remember when I was in the military and I came back from a deployment and I'm thankful that I had a boost of $300. It was uh, the Marine Corps Relief Aid Fund. I, I had a bunch of food delivered for me for Thanksgiving. And I was thankful for that. You know, oftentimes, because of the lack of financial education in our school system, because of the lack of financial awareness and understanding about money in our communities, people find themselves in a bad financial position. And when they get money, they don't know what to do with it. And by the way, I believe there's also evidence of people, uh, I think it was on, on Market Watch, where uh, people were using their stimulus checks and they're having like relief spending. And instead of buying necessities, they're buying electronics and big screen TVs and they were splurging the money. So I, I get the two sides of the argument, but I, I disagree with him saying that 600 bucks can't help somebody because here's the big problem. Here's the big problem. I get it if the country didn't shut down businesses or give people an opportunity to go to work. But the government did shut down our, our, our businesses. The government did create essential and non-essential workers for a vast, large amount of people. They can't get to work. They're willing and able to get to work, but they can't. And it's so frustrating for a lot of people. So if the government, if you, government, USA government, if you are not allowing people to work, then yes, you have to find ways for relief. Like, why well, don't you try this for an instance? Why don't you stop collecting taxes? How's that? How about uh, stop collecting interest on student loan debt? How's that? How about if, if, if schools are shut down, the local real estate taxes aren't paid because that's what taxes pay for, right? To, for our kids to go to school? Well, if you're going to shut down the ability for parents to send kids to school, you shouldn't be collecting them in taxes. You should collect sales taxes if those things that sales taxes pay for aren't being provided. If the government collects it and these aren't provided, then why pay taxes? So... Is 600 bucks, 1400 bucks gonna change your life? Absolutely not. I hope that you're not looking for 600 bucks, 1400 bucks to change your life. It'll help your life. I just don't think it'll change it. Your problem, you have a debt problem, you have a relationship problem, you have a mental health problem, something else is going on if $600 changes your life. And that's not talking down to folks. Yo, okay, okay, so you went out there. Now, right, you've got bigger problems than 600 bucks for sure. Yeah, if, if, you, if you're waiting on a $600, $1,400 check, you are, you have a bigger problem. I agree with him on that. I, I remember uh, uh, opportunities would come my way, and man, I wish I had my money for this. I wish I had my money for that. that I, had a, I had a career issue problem. I had a marital issue problem. I had a relationship issue problem. Matter of fact, to some extent, I agree with him. But with that being said, there might be areas that he's off-putting a lot of people thinking that 
the government shouldn't be helping, period. Let's take a look at what he's got to say. Your life. And that's not talking down to folks. I've been bankrupt. I've been broken. I work with people every day who are hurting. I love people. I want people to be lifted up. I don't think but he's talking down is, to folks. Again, it is, it is just political rhetoric, and it's just throwing dollars out there. It's peeing on a forest fire. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me wrap this up. The, the challenge here, too, as well, is that when the stimulus is created, you got you to consider, of all the money that was created in the history of the United States, how much money do you think was created in the history of the United States? I think the number is $10 trillion. $10 trillion was created and printed by the government, the United States of America, in the history of America. Okay, $10 trillion of cash. 25, over 25% of that was created in the last year. Think about that. So what does that do to the dollar? When there's more supply, what happens? It lessens, it weakens the dollar and causes inflation. So in other words, things are gonna cost more money. Instead of, I remember growing up, gallon of milk was like a couple bucks. A crate of eggs, a couple bucks. Today it's three, four, five bucks. Gallon of milk, five, six bucks. Things just cost more money. But what has an increase, things cost more money, but guess what has an increased? Wages. So it's not getting any better, by the way. So if you really want to financially get ahead, you got to think about in 2021, how do I fix this money problem? How do I fix this issue? How do I get to my, to my situation where I am making more money instead of just depending on government checks, uh, unemployment checks, handout checks from the government? Because again, the, the whole thing is I've been learning about capitalism, socialism, government, left, right, all these debates. One thing that sticks out to me is this. If a government is big enough and good enough to give you everything that you want, they're also big enough and good enough to take everything that you have. So you got to figure out your situation. This is the land of the three, the home of the brave. You got to pursue happiness. Happiness is not going to land itself on your lap. So I know what things that uh, Dave Ramsey said uh, may be off put to a lot of people. Some extent, I know that he's right in some extent, but to some extent, I know that there's a lot of generosity that can be extended from people that do have money or people that do have savings or people that do have uh, finances in order to help other people. I mean, the, the things that we've done here around our office, we've not laid off anybody. We've actually created jobs. Every time we go to the uh, uh, the restaurants, we over tip our servers because we just thank them for being open. There's certain, there's small things that every citizen can do that has money to stimulate the economy. Because here's the thing too as well. What has what has exposed to me is this: what Black Friday taught me, what the Super Bowl taught me, exposed to me that there's a lot of people that have money. And there's a lot of people that don't. But still, at the end of the day, people will find money for things that they value. Go back to values and principles. All right? A lot of people are off, off put by the facts and things people say, but the, the value and principle here is the same. We still need to find a way to not be dependent upon the government. I know this pandemic sucks. I know the situation sucks. But in the meantime, we have to still find ways to make ends meet, put a roof over our head, and find ourselves in a career or an industry that's recession-proof and pandemic-proof. And if you're waiting for somebody else to fix your situation, you'll be waiting a very, very long time. With that being said, I want to know what your thoughts are. Drop in the comment section below your follow-up questions. Drop in the comment section below. Do you agree with Dave Ramsey? Do you, not, do you not agree with Dave Ramsey? Do you not agree with me? Do you agree with me? I don't know. Put it in the comment section below. Let's, cr let's create this dialogue. Let's find solutions. Let's crowdsource some thoughts and some ideas. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I'm a money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today.